before I woke up in the morning, the last, um, the last, thing, the last thing I remember was Bill Cosby uh, in a patchwork robe, dropping his robe and getting on top of me. I'm doing this it's because it's the right thing to do, and it happened to me, and this is the true story. All right, folks, joining us now is uh, Heather Hansen, a healthcare attorney and expert on medical uh, malpractice. Uh, but I, I want to welcome. Always good to see good you. To see you um, so first, let, let's talk about this Bill Cosby stuff. Uh, there, uh, there is a statute of limitations, and for rape, I think the way I've heard it described is because, um, you know, if someone comes forward 20 years later, said he raped me, and he had a legitimate alibi, but that person's dead, you know, then he has no defense. That kind of thing. Right, and the statute of limitations is different in every state, right. and it depends on the type of rape it is. But in general, it's because evidence is not well right. preserved right. that many years later, and you have to pro protect the presumption of innocence. So that's and, and the it doesn't only apply to rape; it applies to most things. There are statute of except murder because uh, that person is is dead. And uh, uh, anyway, so so how and how much trouble is Bill Cosby? Forget career wise. I'm talking about legal wise. Legally, he's in very little trouble. Not only is there a statute of limitations for the criminal action, but there's also a statute for the civil action. So, you know, there was a civil action that resolved by settlement in 2006. The rest of these ladies that have come forward so far are limited. They can't recover any sort of civil action against him. So in legal terms, he's in very little trouble. In social terms, yeah. as we've seen, a whole lot. Yeah, well, he got a standing ovation, I think, uh, last night somewhere. And now in Westchester, um, in New York, they're, they're not canceling his performance. And they're not giving refunds to people who want to, you know, not go anymore. So that's a kind of bizarre situation. Yeah, I mean, last night he got a standing ro ovation, and I guess it was a full house. But listen, there are a lot of people who are of the mind, including including myself to some degree, that because none of this is proven, you know, it's hard to defend yourself in the court of public opinion. Right. We just saw Janice Dickinson talking about it. No one's cross-examining her. You know, even those who are interviewing her are not giving her the types of questions that we lawyers would ask. And so there's no one really challenging challenging some of these women's accounts. No, and, and that and that's dangerous because any, I mean, rape is a very serious thing. And I've always said if someone is proven to have raped somebody, they should, I, I think cutting it off is not a bad penalty. But it's easy for a, a woman to say, he raped me. I mean, or in any case, but so you got to have real hard proof. Well, the thing that this has done is really brought to attention the problems with sexual assault cases. Because on one hand, you have just that. You have the fact that the man who is accused is, is allowed to be presumed innocent. And how do you prove a negative, that you did not do something? Right. And on the other hand, we've seen how difficult it is for women to come forward. One thing that strikes me is the AP came out with an interview, a part of an interview that they had never played before. Yeah. It, it's interesting to me that they only did that once the entire nation was sort of outraged. And yet we expect women who have been raped to come forward right away. Yeah. And so it just shows how difficult it is when there's someone in power who has overpowered a woman. Now, what about the president's executive order yesterday? Um, you know, the Republicans have options. They actually filed their lawsuit today, but only on Obamacare. It had nothing to do with the immigration order. Um, it, you believe it holds constitutional muster? I believe that it is going to be a difficult case to win. And, and talking about the immigration case, yeah. the, the Obamacare yeah, case yeah, is no, a little the, bit different. I meant the With the immigration case, it's going to be difficult to win. There's a 33-page Department of Justice memo that came out that is in support of what Obama did yesterday. There is an argument to be made either way. Is there a case there? Sure, that's what we lawyers do. We find cases. Right. And the lawyer on the other side will defend the case. The people who suffer are the Americans who are paying for all of this to occur and the time taken to do all of this is time that should be spent governing. So while I do think that it's a stretch to do this deferred action and I think that the DOJ knew it was a stretch, one of the things they rely upon is the fact that Congress has not in the past acted. Right. So it's the turn of the screw to yeah. say, listen, if you guys had done something or will do something, we won't be here. And Obama specifically said, or his people have, that since the time he said it would be unconstitutional for me to do this, Eric Holder has sort of come up with, well, here's why it's constitutional. Well, so, that's, yeah. that's exactly yeah. what they were tasked to do, and yeah. that's what they did in this yeah. memo. Well, how convenient that is, I'll tell Thanks. you. <laughs> Always good to talk to you, Heather. You Thank too, you very Steve. much. All right, Heather Hansen, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and by the way, you know, from time to time, uh, we take uh, calls, Skype calls, on this show, which harkens me back to my radio days when I took calls uh, on my radio show, of course. And if you want to be on the show, and weigh in on the hot news topics of the day or ask me any kind of questions, be sure to go to Newsmax.com Skype 
and sign up. That's what you have to do. It's newsmax.com slash Skype. And you get on our list. We'll get in contact with you and we'll set it up. Up next, Newsmax Deputy Financial Editor Rob Williams with the Closing Bell Report.